Uh, I was just going to ask um, Paperboy uh, just two questions. Number one, do you believe that Jesus was a prophet or not? Because I'm, I'm not sure from your articulation if your belief is that he was a prophet or not. Or that oh, you just don't believe that there was an explicit statement. Oh, yeah, of course, Jesus was a prophet. He he was a king. He was the Messiah. He was a prophet. He was a man. He was got. He fulfilled different roles. So today, I'm going to be going over the discussion I had with Mr. Mohammed Lenny Hijab, the gift that keeps on giving. And if you don't know who Lenny is, he's actually a character from a very famous book called Of Mice and Men. Now. As we already know from previous debates, when Mr. Hijab starts to talk, he will eventually get himself busted. And in this case, we shall see the same thing happen. This is the same Mr. Hijab who said, I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put four, not to the prophet. Now, after our discussion, this guy had the deluded sense to think that he got me busted. But the only thing he did was to help prove the Christian case that Jesus claimed to be God. Mr. Hijab, we're about to see Paperboy make his delivery and get this Abdul busted. So thank you, Mr. Hijab. And inshallah, you will continue to give us more gems in the future. But we will start with this one. So everyone knows that Muslims love to approach Christians and say, If Jesus is God, I would like you to show me one verse, only one statement anywhere in your Bible, any version of the Bible where Jesus says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. Mark me. I said there is not a single unequivocal statement. Not a single unambiguous statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me. <laughs> if you can show me why Jesus claimed that he is God unequivocally, clear cut, unambiguously, then yes, you got a point. Muslims bring this criteria week in, week out to Christians. And because these guys don't use their brains, I then said, based on your own criteria, Jesus must not be a prophet because he never said the explicit words, I am a prophet. So once you remove this red heron argument, we see how quickly the Islamic argument crumbles and they get themselves busted because the Bible shows us that Je Jesus rarely used explicit terms, which is why in the book of John 10, for example, it says, so the Jews gathered round him and demanded, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. I already told you, Jesus replied, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify on my behalf. So we see the Jews were even asking Christ for an explicit statement and clarification that he was the Messiah. In the same way, Muslims ask for explicit statements. But Jesus said, I already told you through my works. So let's listen to Lenny's response and see how quickly he gets himself busted. And we're all going to laugh together. Jesus, was, you're saying Jesus was a prophet? Yes. Uh, Hashem mentioned a verse in Mark chapter 6 verse 4. Yeah? yeah, where Jesus Which said that? Uh, a, a prophet is not, um, sorry, say it again, Hashim, a prophet is not, uh, it's not uh, excluded from his hometown or yes. something like that, which is also but, in Luke chapter 4. Yeah, but that is not an explicit statement. For example, if no, no, I, no, I'm, not, no, no, I'm just saying that, uh, do you take so such a verse, right, in Mark yeah. and another verse in Luke in, in chapter 4, I think verse 24? Yes, um, right, in your understanding, okay, yeah. does is that is is that Jesus that's speaking here? About himself. Yeah, implied. So let's look at the passage in Mark. It says, He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him there were astonished, saying, Where did this man get this, these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? 
and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour, except in his hometown and amongst his relatives and in his own household. And he could, he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hand on a few sick and healed them. So, when questioned, did Jesus say, I am a prophet, you must listen to me? No. But what, that's the criteria Muslims ask for. Did Jesus use unequivocal terms in this passage? No. He gave an implicit statement, but according to Muslims, Jesus should have responded to those people in unequivocal terms. And this is how you get these Abduls busted. So, for the sake of clarification, let's look at the dictionary definition of an explicit statement and implied statement. So, we go to the dictionary and it says, suggested though not directly expressed. And we look at explicit, it says, clearly state, stated clearly and in detail, leaving no room for confusion or doubt. So, according to the dictionary definition, Jesus gave an implied statement. And this is where we will get Mr. Hijab busted and his arguments will crumble. Because if you didn't know that he was a prophet, like the people in the passage, it would have been an ambiguous statement. So it seems, not only does Mr. Hijab like to butcher the Hebrew language. The word Elijah in the, in the Hebrew language means God is with us. And Elijah actually means my God is Jehovah, not God with us. We now see Mr. Hijab is also butchering the English language. So let's listen to what Mr. Lenny Hijab says next. Please. Let me just make one point, right? An explicit statement is effective in so much as the end user, in this case yourself or me, are yeah. able to identify it as explicit. Thank you very much, Mr. Lenny. <laughs> Guys, did you catch that? Let's listen to that part again. An explicit statement is effective in so much as the end user, in this case yourself or me, are yeah. able to identify it as explicit. So according to Mr. Hijab, an explicit statement is effective as the end user is able to identify it as explicit. Well, thank you, Mr. Hijab. You have now just got yourself spanked and we will now use this to establish that Jesus claimed to be God. So now we go to the Bible. It says, at that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not amongst my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand and I and the father are one. The Jews picked up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the father for which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. So Mr. Hijab, who were the end users in this passage exactly? Yep, you've got it. It was the Jews who spoke the same language as Jesus and understood, understood all his cultural references. The Jews who perfectly understood him and then accused him of making himself God. So Mr. Hijab, you have just highlighted that the Jews and the Christians are both in agreement that this is a statement where the end user is able to identify it as explicit. Perfect. So let's give Mr. Hijab one more Bible verse for good luck. We go to John 8 56 where it says, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. 
He saw it and was glad. So the Jew said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So why did the Jews want to stone Jesus? Well, again, according to Mr. Hijab, we know that the Jews at the time and the Christians are in agreement that this statement where the end user is able to identify as, it, it, and to identify as explicit is where Jesus confirmed he existed before Abraham who saw him. So then we go to the book of John chapter eight and it says, Jesus said to them, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you will die in your sins for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. So here we just have it confirmed that Jesus is saying he's from heaven. So thank you very much, Mr. Hijab. Round of applause. Because even though I've got you cooked, smoked, roasted and toasted, we're gonna continue because Mr. Hijab likes the sound of his own voice and the more he talks, the more he will always get himself busted. Uh, if that is in your understanding, referential to Jesus Christ, and in fact, not just to your understanding and my understanding, but the, the understanding of, I think, almost all the commentators that have ever commentated on this biblical passage. Then yeah. for me, I think suffice it for me, to, for, for me to say that that's an explicit statement that Jesus Christ was speaking about himself in the third person. What you're confusing, you, I, I think here, you're, yeah. you're confusing a third person reference with an implicit one. Just because I, I speak about myself in the third person, it doesn't mean yeah. that becomes implicit all of a sudden. Hmm. I can speak about myself in the third person, but in very explicit terms. So for example, if I speak to my children, I say, your father will not tolerate this, okay? I'm not speaking about anybody else except for me. Unless of course, you know, my children have some kind of uh, uh, doubt as to who their father is, <laughs> which, which I can assure you, which, oh, I can oh. assure you they, which I can assure you they don't. Guys, did you hear that? This guy, Lenny, just got himself busted in the same sentence. Seriously. How does Mr. Hijab do this? It seems like he's the only one capable of this and every time you think he's gonna do something great, he puts himself into the biggest blunder. Let's listen. Hmm. I can speak about myself in the third person, but in very explicit terms. So for example, if I speak to my children, I say, your father will not tolerate this, okay? I'm not speaking about anybody else except for me. Unless of course, you know, my children have some kind of uh, 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 doubt father. as to who their father is. <laughs> this guy went from saying, if he says to his children, your father will not tolerate this, this is an explicit statement. But then two seconds later, he says, unless his children have some doubts about who their father is. But a moment ago, I thought you just said it was an explicitly clear statement. Now in Mark, we know Jesus was speaking to disbelieving Jews. So the statement was implied and you've just confirmed it is an implied statement because there is a level of ambiguity as we saw with the dictionary definition. But as Christians, we accept it because we know he's a prophet, just like we accept the other verses because he is God. So now Muslims can no longer complain that a verse is ambiguous. Why? Because of Mr. Hijab. Because even in your own words, you said that when you say your father will not tolerate this and you're not speaking about anyone else, you just confirm that your children who are the end recipients may still get confused. This is why Jesus said in Matthew 13, for this people's hearts has grown callous. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. So it seems like Mr. Hijab needs some cotton buds for his ears. So I have some advice for the SC Dawa channel. 
next time Mr. Hijab is on the panel and he wants to speak, mute his mic because he's only going to embarrass himself. So thank you, Mr. Hijab. The Donkey of the Year award goes to you and we'll throw in the donkey of next year for you as well. Because in one minute, you went from making a claim to refuting your very own claim in just one second. So now, when we look at the mark in the verse and mark again, did the people have doubts? Yes, they did. Therefore, it's an implicit statement. Boom. We only know he was referring to himself because we know he's a prophet. Just like when he makes divine claims about himself because we know he is God. Explicit statement from an implicit statement. Hadouken. Hadouken. There's, there's a world of difference between Jesus calling himself a prophet in the biblical discourse, which make it impossible for exegetes to uh, interpret it otherwise, versus Jesus supposedly uh, referring to himself in divine terms, which you haven't shown us anything close to uh, uh, Mark chapter 6 no, verse uh, when we look at the statement of before Abraham was I am, the exegetes are in agreement that Jesus is proclaiming pre-existence, as we can see. Oh, and for your divine statement that you asked for, we'll go to the book of Mark chapter 14, 60, and it says, And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated in the right hand of power and come in with the clouds of heaven. So for confirmation, let's go to the apostate and atheist scholar, Dr. Bar Ehrman, who was asked about this very same passage and even he himself got himself busted, just like Mr. Lenny Hijab. It's not that some anonymous son of man is coming. Jesus is coming. Mark thinks that's what Jesus, that Mark thinks that's what Jesus is. So when Jesus says, you will see the son of man, Mark requires you to think Jesus is the son of man. The high priest knows that he thinks that. And so the high priest thinks he's claiming to be the son of man. And so he calls out blasphemy. So is it a divine claim? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, it is. Yeah, kind of. But it's not like Jesus saying, I and the Father are one. <laughs> so, Mr. Hijab, there's your explicit claim of divinity. The atheist scholar is in agreement with the Jews of Jesus' time, who are also in agreement with the Christians about Jesus' words here. So, the only words I have for you is, Janaza. So, just to finish off, guys, Let's listen to Mr. Hijab's babble for a few minutes. Linguists can, because these words implicit and explicit may completely descope the discussion. What to you could be implicit in many contexts is to me very explicit. Guys, did you hear him say linguist? This guy cannot even master the English language and he has the audacity to try and speak the Hebrew language where he embarrassed himself and now he thinks he understands Jesus's words better than those who spoke Aramaic. But but the thing is, we, we have no difference of opinion here. We both agree that Mark chapters number six, verse number four, and Luke chapter number four, verse number 24, where Jesus in no uncertain terms refers yeah. to himself as a prophet is in fact referential okay. to Jesus being a prophet. So guys, again, this donkey, the same thing. He said, it's explicit for who the information is intended to. And I'm sorry to inform you that the statement Jesus made were to the Jews of his time and not for Lenny the donkey hijab in 2020. So everyone, let's give Lenny a round of applause because we now see how this guy does not even know what he's talking about and he has just helped prove the Christian case. So the Christians agree with the Jews of Jesus' time that Jesus was claimed to be God in terms that they understood explicitly. Case closed. So I think you've shot yourself in the foot with all due respect, that paper boy, you know why? No, Mr. Hijab, it is you who shot yourself in the foot. I'll tell you why you shot yourself in the foot, paper boy. I'll be honest with you right now, yeah? Because okay. you start all, all audaciousness and all confidence and all stridency. 
You came yeah. on this platform, guns blazing, saying, you know what I mean? Why is this guy trying to sound like Tony Montana? You know what I mean? Seriously, guys, get a grip on yourself. I'll tell you why you show yourself in the football paper boy. I'll be honest with you right now, yeah? Because okay. you start all, all audaciousness and all confidence and all stridency. You came yeah. on this platform, guns blazing, saying, you know what I mean? You said, yeah, there's uh, give me one. You challenged us. You challenged us. You challenged us, brother. Yeah, you challenged us. You came yeah. on this platform and you said, bring me one explicit statement that says that Jesus is a prophet. Well, seems like we've seen this rant before. You're nothing, do you understand? If you want to come and speak to me like that, yeah, you're telling them about them things, yeah? So then Mr. Hijab finishes off with this falafel. Let's have a listen and laugh. And paper boy, I think your, your arguments are paper thin. And you're talking about flakes. I think your arguments are flakes. Look, at the end of the day, you had the audacity to come on this thing and tell us, no, 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 hold on. You had the audacity to challenge us, yes? To challenge us on this platform. After all these weeks, week after week, you come to speak as Corona and you're acting like a hard man trying to pick on the lay Muslim. You come on the Muslim show, you get humiliated. Have you got any response? Yes, Mr. Lenny, I do have a response. You are a certified donkey who actually humiliated himself. And remember guys, this is the same guy that said For 4,000 years, he has gone from looking like this to looking like this because clearly he should never go on the podium again. So on that note, Paperboy signing out until next time. The peace of Christ be with you. And we know they can't hack the hack. You are Ali. You are Ali.